I found teams have the most success when they designate. So if you've got multiple rackers on the floor that both feel like they can get the ball, what you're doing is you're going to bring two players into the speed zone. They're stopping and waiting for the outlet. And whichever one gets chosen, the other one's out of position. You got to give them a role. All situations are unique. There's no one right way. At the end of the day, you're going to coach your team and find out what works for you. Role identification is where most coaches fall down. And it's so hard because players hate being put in a box. They're like, no, but coach, I can do that. And I can do that. I don't want to be this. I want to be that. With high clarity comes high performance. And when there's ambiguity on roles and what shots players are allowed to take, that's when you get poor shot selection, poor shot selection loses games. And so as uncomfortable as it is, I like to err on really, really strict role identification early and loosen it up late. A really, really good coach once told me, even with how they interact with their players, early in the season, they were really, really strict. This is how we do things. These are standards, right? And then later in the season, once they've shown some, some trust and some connection, then they loosen it up. I would suggest the same thing for your role identification. At the competitive level, your five best players should be playing the majority of the minutes. What I actually suggest is all five of your roles, your rack or your dragon, your two locks and your rabbit, they all have their own subs. You have your backup rabbit, your backup lock left, your backup lock right. And the way for the subs to get more minutes is get better. If you're playing this way every day in practice, your top five players aren't going to need that much rest. You got 32 minutes of high school game, 25 or 26, you know, in five, six minutes for the backups. So there's not really a need to like rotate people through that much. And then on the flip side, for those of you that are like on the development side, you should like rotate people through the roles. Youth development, you know, even like a freshman team, for me, it might even be up to the JV level where it's like, all right, for two weeks, you're the racker. Now two weeks, you're going to get the lock position. Two weeks, you're the dragon. Now you're two weeks at the rabbit. Rotate people through, develop them. It's really, really powerful. And then once you get to the competitive level, which would be like college or like varsity, that's when you kind of hone in a little bit.